<laughs> oh, well, yes, yeah, okay. Sit back and relax, and Gus will tell you the story. A few months ago, a new cat came into the neighbourhood. It was a big, grey, ugly, rough-headed thing. And it didn't like Bella. And Steve didn't like it. I just saw that grey, bloody cat from next door in here again. Jeez, I've been trying to catch it for months. When I get it, I'm going to drown it, just like my dad does. I'm going to get a wire cage, put it in a big bathtub with bricks on top of it till it's dead. Nine times over. I'll make sure that grey bastard never comes back here again. I'm sick of it. <laughs> the reason the cat didn't like Steve was because he kept throwing rocks at it. Sticks and bricks, anything you could find. Anyway, the, this conversation you're just about to see here now was recorded by CCTV that's mounted on the top of the house. And uh, you, you get the impression that this cat's a pretty mean sort of a cat. Just have a look. Hey, Bella. That mongrel old man of yours has been trying to get me. He's been throwing rocks and sticks at me, and I'm going to get him back. And you know how I'm going to get him back? As soon as he's not looking, I'm coming over there, and I'm going to chew the end of your tail off and scratch your eyes out, and you'll be wobbling around like a blind old Freddy. So you better watch out, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> I know everyone thinks my dad is a mean, mean man, but he's not really. He's all talk. He was not really mean at all. And, and I do love him, and not as much as I love Mum, because Mum's just so nice. Dad's, yeah, he just says nasty things, but he doesn't really mean them. And, and uh, I, 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 I just hope that that cat doesn't get, get, get my tail and, 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 and take my eyes out because oh, I'd hate to be blind, I really would. I, oh, oh, please don't let that cat get me. Dad, Dad, can you get somebody to come and catch that cat and get rid of it, please? But, but don't, don't do what you said. Don't, don't kill it. Just, just take it somewhere else and get rid of it. Oh. Please, Dad. Look, I've brought you outside here because I didn't want my mum to hear what I was going to say. As you were told at the beginning, Bella didn't have much respect for the personal property of others. The truth is, they should have named her Winona Ryder because she's definitely a bit of a klepto. But apart from that one character flaw... She's otherwise a very nice girl. And, in my opinion, a very sexy one as well. You can see from this next footage that she liked nothing better than to snuggle up with her mum and be petted and stroked. Gee mum, I wish you would rub my belly instead of tickling me under the arm. But I suppose any attention is better than none. Oh, that feels good. Oh, 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 do it again, Mum, do it again. Oh, please. Oh, 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 oh. Now, as it happened, there was an old basset hound that lived up the street. He secretly perved on Bella, but he was cunning enough to stay out of the CCTV range, so nobody in the family knew he was skulking around. That didn't mean that the grey tomcat didn't know. He stayed out of the way when the basset hound was about. That is, until the Basset Hound overheard his threats to Bella. He wasn't going to have the girl that he loved threatened by no mangy cat. So needless to say, that mangy feline is all of his lives up in one go. And Bob, that was the Basset Hound's name, disposed of the cat's remains in the very next skip pin going to the tip. Well, I suppose the time is right to introduce the other players in our story. You all know that I'm Gus McGarity, Bella's cousin. This is her half-cousin, Foxy Jorgerson.
I am half Danish, so please forgive the way I speak. It's none of my fault. My father taught me to speak, and I find it very hard to understand him. So it must be hard for you. And this next handsome young fellow is Bella and my cousin, that sporting young chap, every bitch's dream, Max McGarity from Box Hill. Hello everyone, I'm Max. If I were Troy McClure from The Simpsons, I might say, you might remember me from one of my many movies, like The White Wolf of Box Hill. But I'm not Troy, I'm just Max McGarity, and I live at Box Hill with my mum and dad. My mum is very nice, and dad's alright too. He cooks my dinner for me every night. This story is about Bella, not me, so I'd just like to say to Bella, stay home with your mum. She loves you, and you'll always be safe. But whatever you do, don't have anything to do with that rotten old hound. Or with the sneaky Jorgerson mutt foxy. He's just bad news all round. So good luck to you again, Bella. And now I'll say goodbye and hand you over to Gus to continue your story. Now back to our story. Bob Bassettown couldn't wait any longer. So just like a scene from the movie A Streetcar Named Desire, Bob stood outside a house and called out, Bella! Bella! Baby, I'm in love with you, and I've committed a feline murder for you. Please listen to my serenade, and now I mean every word of it. So sorry, cause I made you cry. I'll never let you go, cause I love you. So please don't ever say goodbye. That flea-ridden old bag of bone basset hound can bugger right off if he thinks he's going to have his way with my little girl. For free, anyway. I haven't met, but I have heard about Cousin Bella. In Scandinavia, where I come from, first cousins are acceptable to mate. As we are not quite first cousins, there should be no problem. So, if Uncle Steve is looking for a temporary mate for Bella, I can guarantee I will send her home with not only kibbly in her belly, but many, many tails and lots of legs as well. <laughs> yeah. See, it's just what I told you. That old bastard hound is just a pedophile. And Foxy is, he's a lich and a lowlife. Don't have anything to do with him, Bella, whatever you do. Don't have anything to do with the mongrel. She's not going anywhere with any dog unless I get paid. The going rate for a puppy these days is about 800 bucks. I figure Bella would be good for five pups, so that's, uh, uh, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, uh, uh, yeah, no, that, that's, that's four thousand dollars. So, uh, nobody's gonna touch my dog for under two thousand. Two thousand's the price, all right? To solve the problem of Bob, the Basset Hound, Steve, good to his form, rang the council dog catcher to come and pick him up, and he got taken away and put down. Carolyn, to thwart Steve's greedy exploitation of Bella and to save her from being ravaged by any mongrel, foreign or otherwise, took her to the vet and had her spayed. Well that just about brings the story to an end for the time being. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time round.
Duh. Listen, Dad. I like the way Poppy did my movie. All movie stars have stand-ins, and the stand-in he used is much better looking than me, so I'm happy for the girls to think I'm better looking than I really am. And it's not my fault I'm a big doofer. Well, I was born that way. I've got big fat feet and a big stupid head. So when, when I see myself on film with just a real pretty face, and nice ears, I, I, I like it. So don't go crooked, Poppy.